lot has obviously evolved since uh, you know the first crisis started hitting on uh, digital media in 2017. Um, it originally, a lot of the talk was around brand safety, which was just you know um, um, content that was not appropriate for any brands, um, whether it was monetizable or not. Um, things like you know terrorism videos or or um, violent um, you know uh, graphic violent type videos or or, or you know triple X type videos, things like that that were just not brand safe for any brand. Um, from there, it's evolved more to focus more on brand suitability. <clears throat> a lot of the partners and platforms have done a great job of um, drawing that wall with brand safety. In other words, things are either brand safe or they're not. It's pretty cut and dry. Um, there's a lot of agreement in the industry on what brand safety is. Uh, brand suitability has a lot of different flavors. It's a, it's a lot more subjective and relevant for um, different brands. Um, and we've worked you know, very hard with partners in the industry like the 4As, the Advertiser Protection Bureau, uh, IAB, um, you know, GARM, ANA, on you know, helping to define um, the various shades of brand suitability in terms of like low, medium, and high risk across um, the, the main categories that are rep represented. How do you see the buyers um, dealing with the current situation in terms of uh, their goals around brand suitability? So uh, specifically talking about the current situation, um, it's been uh, a little different for every different type of brand and client partner. Um, and we've had conversations across the industry at you know, other uh, holding companies you know, in terms of what their brands are doing in different industry discussions. Um, some brands you know, initially have taken kind of a, um, uh, a one size fits all approach in terms of you know, uh, limiting content uh, across their buys. Other brands have more of a, a, an aggressive um, approach. Um, and very quickly, we, we kind of got advisories out and discussions with each of our um, you know, clients and client teams um, to have more of a, a surgical approach, right? In that um, not, you know, not just with the current situation with, with COVID, but you know, along any topic in brand suitability, uh, there's various shades and various um, um, you know, semantics and meanings uh, of the content in the page. Um, so not all content you know, is, is harmful for a brand or, or inappropriate for a brand. Um, uh, we're on the other side, um, brands may feel no matter what, you know, certain content is, is not where they want to have their uh, paid media or their media show up um, at all. So, you know, specifically with the, the current situation with COVID, um, you have a lot of content that's out there, whether it's on premium news sites or entertainment sites, sports sites, you name it, um, referencing, um, you know, the COVID-19 coronavirus content um, or crisis, excuse me that is very positive in nature. It's, it's about how the communities are coming together or it's very um, um, kind of uh, objective or, or innocent in nature of, you know, top 10, you know, books to read your children while you're, you know, while you're at home with the, during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, in, with some technologies or some approaches, that content would be 100% avoided uh, as well, where in, in other ways with a more surgical and, and uh, specific approach, um, the, the positive content or the content that is kind of down the middle um, is treated like any other content that the brand wants to advertise on. So how about the tools? We hear a lot about contextual tools. We hear a lot about machine learning tools. Um, what technology is exciting to you or what technology needs to bubble up either that you guys create internally or from the brand safety companies themselves? It's a good question. I mean, a lot has evolved over the uh, last few years where it just came, you know, from, uh, you know, what I like to say is using an axe as approach to now using a scalpel. Um, so and a lot of the keyword technologies that have been employed for years um, really just focused on the URL. So if it was, you know, newsite.com slash, you know, crisis and, you know, crisis was on your, 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 uh, your keyword block list, you wouldn't run on that page regardless of what the content of the page was. Uh, and a lot has evolved over the last couple of years. Um, IS's purchase of Atlantics late last year uh, that looks more to you know, the, the true meaning of the page, you know, uh, the context and, and semantics of the page as well uh, to understand, you know, is this a positive article? Is it a neutral article? Um, is it aligned with what the goals and the settings are for that you know, partner in that account? Um, to really get a better understanding using um, you know, various methods, whether it's you know, machine learning or, or um, natural language processing, um, you know, every uh, company has kind of a different uh, um, way of doing it. I think we see, we'll see a continued trend with uh, what we were just talking about, is that really kind of understanding the, the, the meaning of the page, how users and consumers um, may consume the content or react to it. 
Um, there's a lot of different studies that have been, you know, published out there, some, you know, by, by the vendors themselves, some independent, really trying to understand, you know, what a user thinks about a brand on a certain page. Are they favorable? Are they not favorable? Um, are they leaning in? Are they sitting back? You know, there's different analysis saying that, um, you know, on one hand, you know, consumers really are engaged on, on long, lengthy premium news articles. You know, and then the other side of the coin, you've seen, you know, started to say, yes, they're very engaged, but they also don't want to interact with an ad at that moment or that, uh, that particular type of brand at that moment. So I think in terms of innovation and, and you know, continuing the trend, um, really finding, uh, making it easier and surfacing content that is a good fit for a specific brand. So whether you're selling automobiles or lawnmowers or, or, or you know, consumer packaged goods or, or, or travel, right? The, the content that will be the most appropriate, uh, not necessarily from a brand suitability standpoint, but actual um, uh, unlocking the media value and, and making the advertising dollars go further so that you get the best ROI and, and achieve the KPIs for a brand. You know, we've spoken today about brand suitability and, uh, and digital media primarily. Um, are there other platforms where brand safety, you know, is an issue or could become an issue that you're addressing? So brand safety is table stakes, right? There's content that is defined in a way that is not appropriate for any brand um, and doesn't want to be associated with it. So brand suitability, again, there's different variances and nuances to it, whether it's, uh, you know, CTV and OTT uh, or any of the other form of medium that, uh, you know, media that evolves. Um, I think it's the same approach, right? There's, there's content, there's the platform, there's the environment, there's the adjacencies that all um, are, are, are are or should be taken into consideration when um, determining if it's suitable for a brand. Um, and that includes the kind of expanded um, approach or definition of brand suitability and, uh, and brand safety, right? Is how many you know, ad units are on the page? Um, you know, how often is the content refreshed? What's the original source of the content um, and the platform? Um, what does the platform or, or the partner allow on their content, even if it's not the page you're on, what else are they doing in business to be able to you know, provide content to users? So. Um, I, I think it's, you know, it, it's looked on the same lens, um, you know, so just as like the wall gardens, you know, have evolved and, and, and came in, you know, came to be uh, content, whether it's user generated or, or uh, professionally produced is all looked at is what is this content? What's the source? What does it mean for the brand? Do I want to be next to it? Um, I think with some of the newer platforms like C CTV and OTT, a lot of the conversations the last year or so has been you know, more focused around, you know, fraud. Um, you know, malware, um, you know, associated with it as a concern to be able to make sure that, you're, you know, what you're buying for a brand and spending those media dollars um, are actually arriving and landing on the, the platform and the partner that you expect versus, um, you know, another entity pretending to be um, an OTT CTV platform.